Hello and welcome to this short explanation of sociological research methods and research into inequality, part three. And this is going to be about how sociologists get information to study social life. Um, so it's about which methods are used in sociological research. So we're looking at several different types of methods. The first one we can look at is like a checklist. Um, where you're basically going through the same kind of points uh, for every person. So this is what a social survey or involves. A social survey involves the same questions in the same order for every person. <clears throat> when you have that, it's called standardization. And the reason you standardize questions is because it's easier to rep repeat results and it's easier to compare results. Um, and it's like um, a question, for example, like how much, how often do you pray each day? Uh, do you believe in God, yes or no? And do you wear clothing related to your faith? Each of those questions um, asked in the same order to every person in a group of people, um, you could easily compare the outcome. Um, so this would be supported by a more science-based approach like positivism. <clears throat> And another way of doing this is to do it over a longer period of time, like returning to the same pond every day as a scientist to see how much the tadpoles have grown, uh, measuring the same things like water, temperature, how much food. And when you do it over time, it's called a longitudinal survey. So you can go back to the same people and see how things have changed and developed. That might be good to try and identify changes in the patterns of behaviour, like people in different class groups, whether they've changed their job, whether they changed their lifestyle, what, what they eat and drink. There's um, a lot of questionnaires with surveys. Questionnaires um, have the standardised questions in that I mentioned earlier. And you have different types of questions. So you have questions like this, like how many times each day do you pray? So that's called a closed question because there's a limited response that can be given um, and it gives you a number or it's more easy to identify a number from that. Um, so it's more easily quantifiable or, or put into a number form and so you can probably identify um, more information more quickly and try and establish relationships between different types of information. Like for example, how many times do you pray each day? Um, you could compare that, the number from that, with how many people who say yes to that come from different backgrounds, whether they're uh, from different ethnic groups. So you might find more South Asians say yes, uh, and more white people say no. And that might tell you something about the relationship between ethnicity and religious identity. Different types of questions might be, why do you pray? Um, can you describe the experience of prayer? What does it feel like to pray? And those are open questions. And open questions might be used to get more information about thoughts, feelings and attitudes, the beliefs behind behaviour. But they're less likely to be used in questionnaires uh, because they're more time consuming. Especially positivists would say that they're too subjective. So they give you too much information which isn't easily quantifiable and doesn't have a scientific enough feel. Interpretivists would say that they're useful because they give you information that tells you about how the person sees the world, which is the reason why they act, according to interpretivists. Whereas the positivists would say the outside world shapes the individual. So if you find out things like what ethnicity you come from, that tells you enough information to then explain why it might influence your religious identity and so on. The that's because the positivists think the forces are outside in the world, like social integration is a force. If you're integrated into culture, then you behave in a different way to those who are not integrated, for example. That's why Durkheim said that suicide is more common for some groups who are less um, integrated, whereas it's less common for some groups who are more integrated into society. Okay, so you've got, more, you've got interviews. Interviews is a different type of method. And they can be used by this kind of science-based approach, especially um, 
in a structured interview, which is like being asked questions by a computer or online, because the interviewer just asks questions. They don't really ask more questions. They just ask the questions on a sheet, and that's probably using a questionnaire. Unstructured interviews are something different, which we'll look at later with interpretivism. So the positivists would advocate structured interviews. Secondary data is information already collected. So prime statistics. Okay, so there's a, a method called content analysis. And this basically means breaking down and counting the number of um, occurrences of something. And so it's used for describing um, people created information with numbers. So people create written, people create spoken, and people create visual communications. So a video, um, a diary, a TV program, they're all people have created them. And then you can count something within each of those. Um, you could count how many times you see particular use of, of words or particular ideas being, being promoted. So, for example, if you watch um, EastEnders and you count how many times you see um, a male being aggressive and a female being um, emotional. So that, that could be something you're counting. So because you're quantifying or putting the number into num putting the information into numbers and counting things, that would be most supported by positivists again. It could be used by different sociologists like Marxists might want to count how often the working class are labelled negatively. Feminists might want to count how often there's sexist language used. They can do content analysis of anything. For example, um, social media has been studied, like Twitter, there was a study of Twitter which showed that a, a very significant high number of uh, messages had racist language used, um, although it wasn't intended to be offensive most of the time. Okay, so let's look at the methods used by interpretivists next. 